I had absolutely no idea you'd have costumes for an animated film. Deborah Cook, our costume designer, came up with these incredible costumes for this, this imagined kind of Victorian era, blending all these different kind of European styles, Victorian, Edwardian. I love the research. I look at absolutely everything, fashion collections, photographers, art books. One of the paintings that we particularly use for inspiration for this film was Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People. The main focus in that painting is the red, so we use that as our colour palette for the red hat world, the darker sort of world. <gasps> Aye, you, that's how people saw us. We looked at um, Ballet Russe from the 1930s. It was very theatrical, you were seeing it on a stage, so it lent itself very well to puppet sort of animation and a stylized world. Hello! We do a lot of fabric shopping trips and investigative work on what we can use. Um, we're creating our own fabrics. We also use laser cutting in some of the surfaces of the fabrics. You can etch with the laser cutting. To really give it a richness and a texture that we weren't able to do before. His pants here have some laser etched pattern in the surface. You can see it particularly in his hat here too. A white hat indicates privilege, prestige, position. Being able to come up with these incredible designs that are evocative of an idea or a feeling, but also to do it at a scale that's virtually impossible. I mean, some of the, like the leg of one of these characters is as big as my pinky. Wait, what? We need to find things that are believable as clothes in their world, which means they have to be as tiny as they are. They also need to look very elegant and be able to move extremely smoothly for our animation process. The Winnie character, she's dressed in all these prissy outfits from her family, which she obviously just gets filthy. It's time to take off that dress and burn it. There's about 37 yards of fabric in those bottom frills. You need to get the follow through on all of those flounce and petals on her dress, so there's metal things in there to help that follow through. When she lands down in the mud, her dress just goes boink at the end. It takes a lot to make that boink. <laughs> we dance. We'll what? The beautiful sequence of the ballroom, that was the most intimidating. There are so many dresses and every time, you know, someone moves, everyone has to move too and they have to twirl them around. The thing that's terrifying for both animators and puppet makers is floating fabric. It's a real challenge. They have to move in a believable way. Women dancing and dresses swooshing. Underneath, they've actually got hoops of metal with wiring in them. It looks so soft, but it's actually really bendy. It's not a fabric like you would think it's a fabric. They make it ripple like that. That's it, eggs. You're dancing. We've never seen costumes like this at that scale that hold up so beautifully on the big screen. A lot of it is down to Debs really pushing the art of costume making. Absolutely beautiful. It's really an extraordinary achievement.